Welcome to Only For Your Ears and today's episode. But before we begin, I'd like to give thanks to people that have liked, shared and subscribed. This is very much appreciated. Now for today's episode 48, The Puppet Showman by Hans Christian Andersen, which I've renamed as Controlling the Strings of Joy. The structure will remain the same, starting off with a summary where I digress on a few highlighted sentences and give a reflection. Then we'll move on to my critical review on how this fairy tale plays in today's society by using a recent film to give parallels. Then we'll move on to the trigger points and then close with my quote. Let's begin with The Puppet Showman or Controlling the Strings of Joy by Hans Christian Andersen is a fairy tale narrating the story of an elderly man who owns a traveling puppet theater. I digress. These puppets are his real life friends and family. The man considers himself to be the happiest person alive as he is always welcomed with joy when he arrives in a town to perform. I digress. His function is to bring joy into people's lives. Reflection, the power of imagination and creativity. The puppet showman finds great joy and satisfaction in his work because he can control the narrative and choose the best elements from various plays to entertain his audience. This emphasizes the value of creativity and how it can bring happiness, not only to the creator, but also also to those who experience their art. One day, while performing in Seglise, a member of the Polytechnic Institution attends his show and invites him to watch a lecture and experiment afterwards. The man becomes fascinated by the wonders of science and the idea that humans are capable of learning so much. I digress. Well, puppets are objects that can be easily manipulated, whereas humans have a life force of their own, emotions and minds that cannot be manipulated in the same way. What a pity. He discusses his thoughts with the lecture and shares his only wish to be the director of a real theater and manage real actors. I digress, huge mistake. Wait until he finds out he has lost total control. (laughs) Reflection, the danger of ambition, the protagonist's ambition to manage real actors leads him to a miserable experience. This can be a warning about the potential pitfalls or obstacles of striving for something that may not be the right fit or may come with its own set of challenges. The lecturer, who seems to possess some magical powers, grants the man his wish and the puppets come to life. I digress. Be careful what you wish for. However, the man soon finds that managing living actors is not as pleasant as he imagined, as they are are all very different and have their own demands and eccentricities. I digress. This is the real world. No wonder he felt his previous life was perfect. He never really engaged with human beings. Overwhelmed by the situation, he expresses his great regret and desires to have the puppets back in their box. I digress. Of course, he wants to go back to a life where he is in total control. Reflection. The fleeting nature of happiness. The puppet showman is initially unsatisfied with his life, believing that managing real actors would make him happier. However, after experiencing it, he longs for his old life back. This suggests that happiness is often a subjective and exclusive concept and that it might be wise to appreciate the moments of happiness we already have. Suddenly he finds himself in a room with puppets scattered around and he is quickly he quickly puts them back into the box. I digress. The familiar of his disheveled puppets makes him 
feel in control. The next morning, the man feels lighter and happier, realizing that his previous wish had been a mistake. I digress. Choosing to have a different experience wasn't a mistake. It just helped him realize what he always wanted to have was total control. The polytechnic professor has disappeared and the man is now content with his life as a puppet show director, bringing joy and entertainment to children and their families. I digress. The puppet man has realized to appreciate his original life only to return to it again. Reflection. The grass, isn't all, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. The protagonist dreams of managing a real theater with human actors, but when his wish is granted, he realizes it, it isn't as satisfying as he had imagined. I digress. Once he realizes he doesn't have full control over his people, he is confronted with his reality of his existence, which isn't life at all. This teaches the importance of being content with what we have and not assuming that other circumstances will automatically bring happiness. Through the, this tale, Anderson highlights the importance of appreciating what one has and the realization that sometimes what we think will make us happy or happier may actually be less fulfilling than our current situation. Now I'm moving on to my critical review on how this fairy tale plays in today's society. Well, at first I was at loss as to how I would review this fairy tale. It appeared to be a standard situation of viewing life as greener on the other side of the tracks because the puppeteer was in total control of his joyful life. But the downside to his mundane life is he was living an unrealistic, unrealistic life with no real challenging, unpredictable events in his existence that test who he really is as a human being. He controls everything. He's welcomed everywhere he goes because he creates the same narrative which produces a repetitive outcome. No wonder his soul is crying out for change. Besides that, he has never had to deal with conflict before. The lecturer is presented in this life, in his life, to help him realize what it really means to be human, which is something he has denied himself of. I wonder why. When the puppets come alive and he, he and he experiences real life feelings and touch, sensation, etc., this must have created a problem for him. As humans, beings, we are complex with many different aspects to who we are. The more diverse backgrounds we come from, the more multifaceted we become. This can create some difficult issues if you are a bit of a control freak like I am. Because you have, because you have to be mature and strong enough to manage all these complexities which come with responsibilities. The puppeteer has his responsibilities under control with the puppets, so he assumes the lecturer can return these humans back to the puppets he came with and resume his life. The lecturer grants him his wish. The puppeteer leaves this with a sense of appreciation for his life he never had before. Let's move on to the parallel and looking at the film Barbie, which I think is a fantastic concept. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. The protagonist dreams of managing a real theater with human actors. But when his wish is granted, he realizes it, it isn't as satisfying as he had imagined. This is the digress going in to talking about the film Barbie. I believe the doll Barbie was created by Ruth Handler of Mattel, who was the principal architect of the dolls campaign. Handler was inspired by watching her daughter play with her paper dolls that resembled human adult women. 
I think Barbie represented an emancipated woman standing in her power with the world at her feet. So at the beginning of the film, Barbie comes to terms with being a real human being when she says to Ruth Handler, her mother, I want to be part of the people that make meaning in life not the thing that is made. She wants to be alive, smell, communicate, touch, feel, see, and hear, not just be a toy that others play with. Not a product, Barbie says. I want to do the imagination, which means she wants to use her mind. I don't just want to be an idea. She asked the creator, will she give her the permission to be human. Ruth is delighted with her request because she never expected this. And she says something the puppeteer would never have said or allow in the fairy tale. I can't control you any more than I can control my own daughter. Then the song, What Was I Made For, plays in the background. Ruth says, we stand still to see how far our daughters have come. Ruth reveals, as a human, we created ideas so we wouldn't have to deal with the uncomfortable reality of being human beings and which we wanted to avoid, which means you are the dream and fantasy of human girls. But Barbie and Ruth realize her creation wants to have her own fantasy through imagination and living her life. Therefore, the freedom, yes, people, the freedom of choice. At the end of the film, Barbie has an appointment at the doctor's and she's asked to see the gynecologist. Barbie is ready to give birth to the next generation and see how far her human daughter or son comes when she stands still just like Ruth Handler did. Life beyond what, what an idea that's turned into meaning. I thought this was a fascinating idea for a film and I wish I had seen it when it came out at first. Now let's move on to the trigger points people because there are quite a lot of triggers there in the film for me and in this fairy tale. The first trigger, this fairy tale set off a lot of trigger points for me. The puppeteer reminded me of my narcissistic mother who needed to have total control over me. And she did, except she couldn't rob me of my personality. I had a real authentic, real authentic characteristics, which absolutely infuriated her. And she couldn't mimic. But the odd thing, all my life, people have refused to acknowledge me as a real person. They desperately wanted to hate on me. This resulted in society projecting their shadow side on me, which made it easy for them to do this as I am and was a black sheep in my family. And you know, in society, people can smell when you're the black sheep and they say, oh, She's vulnerable and she's easy to pick on, plus desperate to please because she wants to fit in. And unfortunately, that was me. When Barbie says at the beginning of the film, she wants to be more than an idea because she wants to add meaning to her life, make choices for herself. She doesn't want to be just an idea or fantasy that creates meaning to other people's lives. I remember this. I had many ideas when I was younger and I still do that I shared with people and then withdrew. And people would find ways to steal these ideas as though they were taking an object or an idea out of a file cabinet. And they did this without any recognition of me being a human being. I was just a thing they could remove things from and use for themselves and get all the credit for it. Me being a feeling emotional human was most inconvenient for them. Let's look at what Ruth says. 
Ruth reveals as a human, we created ideas so we wouldn't have to deal the uncomfortable reality human beings wanted to avoid, which means you are a dream and a fantasy of human gods. Now, this is what I re realized with this quote, most fascinating, is that as human beings, most people want to escape. They do not want to know what it's like to really be a real person because they're not comfortable in their own skin. So they, they want to be a thing. They want to have something that they can mimic and something that they can put on on top of themselves instead of actually doing the work to be a real human being. Fantasy is one of the best way to discover the deepest innermost truth a person can't, can't accept in reality. Hence escapism and the world is full of escape artists. I think the root cause of why I went into hermit mode for 20 something years and drinking too much wine was to deal with the emotional issues that I could not deal with outside in society. I had, this had to do with people projecting their shadow sides onto me, therefore hating me and creating a monster in their minds. They never wanted to recognize me for who I really was and am today. They needed to hate me because they couldn't deal with the reality of who they thought they were or, were, or who they really were. And the strangest thing now that I have created healthy boundaries, being at my authentic self by being present and standing in my power, peace is power. And a lot of people in the past did everything they could to disturb my peace because they wanted to rob me of my power. And I've realized since I have experienced the spiritual upgrade, I have an aversion to fake people. I think I always have but I just didn't want to believe that people who were bullying me were the mirrors of my narcissistic mother. Narcissists don't have personality. They're plastic and they hide behind a mask that if you ripped it all off, you would see an empty bottomless pit, which is a shame, but that's not my fault. I think the film Barbie is a true reflection of people in society. And there we have today's episode, people, controlling the strings of joy. Now let's close with my quote. Healing is a lifelong lesson, blessing, and gift. We give ourselves mind, body, and soul. Healing is a lifelong lesson, blessing, and gift. We give ourselves mind, body, and soul. Goodbye.